It was Times Magazine founder Henry Lewis who said, I became a journalist to come as close as possible to the heart of the world. I've been a journalist since I was 16, when I first saw my name printed in that special byline box in a big proper newspaper. That's a technical term, by the way. When I first started out, I was ecstatic about all the different possibilities that lay before me. Now, five or years on, I feel like I'm navigating a technological minefield. You might have noticed that journalists have been getting a bit of a bad rep recently. We are manipulators of emotions. We are liars, hacks, frauds. We spread fake news like butter on toast. But hasn't it always been that way? What's any different from the journalism that we're publishing now from the journalism we were publishing back in the day? What different emotions are we provoking in our readers? And to misquote Tina Turner, what's emotion got to do with it? So before you start bursting out into your own renditions of what's love got to do with it, let me say this first. Online journalism was birthed from print journalism, but it's become a whole separate entity in itself. It's become what I like to call the Pandora's box of the media world. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Let's take things back five decades or so to 1953. Bit of a stretch, but hang in there. Ray Bradbury publishes Fahrenheit 451. It's a dystopian novel about a guy called Guy who burns books in a society obsessed with the bombardment of digital entertainment. In Bradbury's world of wall-to-wall -wall telescreens, seashell earpods, and digital communication over human interaction, there's no free emotion, there's no free thinking, there's no meaningful news. Just the continual consumption of infotainment and the orchestration of emotions. Now, when I was 17 and I first read this book, as I began to tread the waters of journalism, I was terrified because this was a world I recognized. It is unfortunately a world we're currently facing. You probably scroll past that bombardment of digital entertainment on your phone today, flicked past those, head uh, those headlines on Facebook, clicked on that cute cat viral video on Instagram, messaged that pal you've been meaning to catch up with for ages instead of just going to meet them. You probably know someone or are someone who owns a set of AirPods, and I would bet my bottom dollar that most of you could tell me what song Theresa May danced out to as she entered the Tory party conference in October, but not what was actually discussed at that conference. We've become a culture of readers who are driven by a desire for news that is as quickly and easily distributed as our social media feeds are filled. Journalism is perceived as being about nothing more than viewer accounts, clicks, shares, and who can break the most outrageous stories first. In my years of experience in digital journalism with the Scottish Sun, with the BBC, and with STV, I have seen online readers grow exponentially. The biggest British outlets amass millions of readers every single day, and news is constantly on the move. The biggest crime in journalism nowadays is to publish behind your competitors. Now, maybe back in the 70s, 80s, or 90s, that would have been by days, weeks, or even months. Now it's in seconds. Journalism is pervaded by notions of quantity over quality, by journalism, by fake news. Back in the 90s, Watergate journalist Bernstein asked, had journalists begun to abdicate their responsibilities to their readers? In this new culture of journalistic titillation, we teach our readers and our viewers that the trivial is significant, that the lurid and the loopy is more important than real news. We condescend and pander to our readers, he said. We have created an idiot culture. Last month, BuzzFeed announced that it was cutting 1,000 jobs globally. Print sales are dropping. We have a culture of readers who are perceiving the world around them through the social media on their phones. Journalists are no longer the gatekeepers of news anymore. Our readers, our viewers, our listeners, they've become their own gatekeepers. So that brings us to the main question. What's emotion got to do with it? The thing about online journalism is that it allows readers to cherry pick the news that they want to see, the content they want to connect with, the things they want to get happy, angry, sad, or start a Twitter debate about. The issue with this is that then readers only tend to see one type of journalism. If you are a BBC reader, you probably only see BBC-type articles in your news feeds. Same with The Guardian, same with The Herald, 
same with the daily record. But online journalism offers so much more than that. Because for every cute cat viral video, for every Twitter storm, for every Instagram debate, there's another journalist uncovering the latest Cambridge Analytica scandal, the New York Panama Papers. There's another journalist out there creating an online interactive feature like The Guardian's Firestorm, The New York Times' Snowfall, there's podcasters reaching new listeners. There's bloggers out there reaching higher viewer accounts. There's microbloggers reaching an entirely new audience in new ways, in new inventive and creative ways. Even back in 2011, just eight years ago, someone managed to live blog the raid on Osama bin Laden by accident. The thing about online journalism is that we've been questioning its transformation for years. We feared the extinction of print journalism because surely the end of print journalism marks the end of real journalism, of real storytelling, of evoking real emotions. But that just isn't the case. It's time for readers to open themselves up to more diversifying news and to look beyond what lands in their social media feed. Outside of my day job, I spend my time teaching students what they need to know, the skills they need, and give them the opportunity to have the experiences I have been lucky enough to have so they can enter the media industry. But I have lost count of the amount of readers or students who have told me that they want to be a journalist, but they don't read the news. Or even worse, they only read one type of news. In this culture of online journalism, when you are offered so many different stories on so many different platforms, why would you cheat yourself out of these different perspectives? Go to the BBC, see what the BBC has to say about a certain story, then head over to the Scottish Sun, then head over to the Guardian, or even better, start with the Daily Record, and then turn and go see what the Herald has to say about it, and then finish off by going to the Facebook post on the Daily Mail's page and see what people are saying underneath the comments section. News has always been driven by human interest, by empathy, by having an emotional connection for people. Berenstein saw an idiot culture, but I see a type of journalism that isn't shy about catering to everybody's reading habits and emotional cravings. As a journalist, I am constantly questioning myself. And as a journalist, I am, as Berenstein once said, breaking new ground and getting it wrong. But I am a journalist because I enjoy writing and sharing stories no matter if that's about Strictly Come Dancing, if it's about the Glasgow School of Art Fire, if it's about National Five Maths exams, or even just meeting busted, which, by the way, highlight of my career. So for me, journalism is about having an emotional connection with people, and that's what motion has got to do with it. Emotion brings us all together, no matter our reading tastes. Remember when I said earlier that online journalism was a bit like the Pandora's box of the media world? In the sense of the idiom, it is a source of great unexpected troubles. In the source of the myth, when Pandora opened her box or her jar, she released all of the evils of the world and humanity. Online journalism has done the same. It's opened journalists up to hate. It's opened up people to trolling. It's started abuse. It's fake news. It's spreading everywhere, it's the bombardment, as we said earlier, of bad news in your feed 24 seven. And it forces readers to perceive the absolute worst in themselves, death, war, disease, greed. But when Pandora opened her box, hope was also in sight. And I think online jo journalism is a little bit like that. It's also about the hope of bringing us all together and away from burning books. Thank you.